First up is Kevin Kinder. Coach, uh, how important was it to get at least a couple of your, I don't want to say veterans, I guess, because they're still kind of youngsters, but more experienced guys back. They set the table in that second inning and also for your couple of last couple of runs in the eighth, you know, to, to kind of take a little bit of that pressure off the freshman. It was huge. And it kind of goes without noticing a little bit, but having Paul McIntosh behind the plate, we've had multiple catchers back there that have done a fantastic job, but the presence that he brings, I think he's a 23 year old that is calm, that is confident, that really manages the pitching staff and everybody on our team looks to him. And so having him back there, complete game changer, obviously you throw him in the three hole and Hudson by comes back and he's in the two hole. He's a fantastic player. He's a fifth year player. And so, yeah, our, our team changed quickly. And that's kind of been the motto the last week or so is hang tight, guys. Hang tight. We got some cavalry coming. The Army's getting stronger. We just got to you got to keep it together. We got to get better in the meantime. And I think we have. And so uh, you're exactly right. And hopefully kind of get some more more players coming here in the next week or so. Next is Cody Nesper. Hey, Coach, just wondering your thoughts on uh, Ben's start. Wonderful. He's been wonderful. He, it's hard to say enough good things about him. He, he's a worker. He's a good student. He throws strikes. He's extremely pleasant. He's a classic kind of Wisconsin personality. Whenever I've been in that state, I'm always so amazed at how kind the people are. They're so nice. He's over the top pleasant, and it's really fun to be around. The guys have a good time with him. Uh, they rib him a little bit, and he just hangs in there really good. But he just set the tone. It's not easy to do what he's done. He goes out as a freshman and has been dominant up to this point. And we kept Ben under 50 pitches today. That was the goal and the game plan going in because depending on – whether Adam Tullock is cleared this weekend and a few others, he might end up being a very big part of some of the weekend games. And so normally when a guy's pitching like he was pitching, he would have been back out in the fifth. But today we knew we had to keep in a little bit lower pitch count. And we also had Tyler Streche um, coming in behind him. So his outing was amazing. Uh, we had got a little bit of momentum on that game too on Saturday. And so coming back, it was like, is this the real deal? A guy that had only pitched one any inning since his quarantine and isolation and heart tests and cardiologist appointments. And so we were really glad to see him get right back to what he does. And that's pound the zone, have multiple breaking balls for strikes and really compete. Next is Greg Carey. Go ahead, Greg. Just wondering if you could kind of Tell us what this last week or so has been like for you and give any sort of an update on Coach Maisie. Yeah. Uh, it's just anybody in the program. It doesn't matter whether it was our athletic trainer, our equipment manager, our assistant coaches. They've all gone through a lot and they've all been asked to do more than they normally do. And especially our players. We have a lot of players that were probably penciled in to be more role players early in their careers, and they've been asked to elevate. And so everybody has been asked to elevate. It's just a combination of what the country is probably going through. It's not unique to us. It doesn't make it easier um, to say that. It's just as difficult on everybody that's involved here, but you're adding the, the pandemic and COVID and competition all in a pot. And then something traumatic happened to our coach's son and our coaches had to step away and be in the hospital. And all of us, that's where our mind goes to first. So over the last couple of days, we've had some really positive news about Weston and some really good things that we've been able to see with our own eyes over video. And Coach Maisie addressed the team yesterday and really, reassured the team, which as a father in that situation, not easy to do, to sit in front of a group of kids that he views as family and he's passionate about this team 
to talk about his own son that was in the hospital. Um, that was hard for him to do, but he was reassuring our team that his son was going to be okay because the accident that happened was on the field and uh, Weston is doing much better and coach Maisie was in a better place. And I think just the family is starting to heal slowly that um, their son's going to be okay. And so that's still lots of unknowns. Don't necessarily know what all of that means, but um, the team, myself, the staff, everybody here is fully supportive and wants to see Weston get better. And everybody's stepped up a ton in the last really two weeks. It's been uh, pretty emotional to say the least. And after the game today, talking to the guys, it was, it was super nice to have a little bit of a less emotional game. Guys threw strikes, they got big hits in big spots. Um, they answered the call. We won by a considerable amount of runs. And I said, we needed a boring game there. We needed a little bit less emotion. We just needed to go play ball and have fun together and, you know, build off a little bit of consistency. So I think it's exactly what our team needed. And, um, you know, obviously Coach Maisie and his family is in our prayers. Cody Nesper. Uh, Coach, you mentioned uh, Stretch A a little bit. Um, it seems like you have a lot of guys who could fill that uh, weekday starter role, and obviously he did it last year. Um, What's going to kind of be the determining factor between who ends up getting those weekday starts this year? Yeah, it was weird early on because we didn't have very many midweeks scheduled. Normally we open up on the road a lot and um, early in the season because of the weather, we're not able to come back home and play at home for the midweek. So we don't play midweek games early on. We try to play four game tournaments and just this year with scheduling has become really difficult but at the end of the day you're looking for competitive strike throwers set the tone early normally Tuesdays um, you're using a lot of your bullpen and so the weekend you're playing in conference you're using the absolute most competitive pitchers that you have um, every game is critical and obviously every game non-conference is critical as well but a lot of times you're getting guys in and out. You saw today, like Moorhead, they, they must have pitched five, six, seven pitchers, and they do that strategically on midweek games where short innings in and out because they have to keep arms fresh enough to be able to go a little bit longer stints on the weekend. And so for us, you hope you have enough depth to really have a Tuesday or Wednesday starter, someone that could go six or seven innings. But if you feel like you don't have quite enough depth and you need that starter on a midweek game, he ends up being a shorter start on a midweek and then a reliever on the weekend. And that's the situation that we're in right now with Ben Hampton and Tyler Stretche and tomorrow Tyler Chadwick and Carlson Reed is that as we're getting more players back and healthy and cleared, we're available or those those players are available for the weekends and we'll need them right now so as you get more guys back and you have some additional arms then you feel comfortable naming a midweek starter and kind of letting him cruise for the game because if he's not available for the weekend that's okay if you have enough arms but right now that's not the situation that we're in and sam Coach, we spoke over the weekend. Uh, you said it's pretty difficult, you know, for guys to get back in and throwing, you know, without getting hurt. Um, but offensively, two of your uh, returners to the lineup today were two of the most consequential players, Hudson and Paul. Um, what, at what point did they return to the lineup? Or were they able to return to the lineup, I should say? And um, I guess how easy would you say it is to return after a long hiatus to get the bat in the ball? Yeah, we're able to train on the field with those guys. Probably the, the biggest deal is that when they come back, their nerves are under control. But when a freshman comes back and you add on, I haven't been playing on top of this is already a little bit different and this is a big situation and these games are important. That's really where it snowballs. But between those two guys, you got nine years of college baseball. So physically, I think they're the hitters are in shape. The hitters are ready to compete. It's just 
the timing of the pitches, the confidence, the heart rate, the nerves, those kind of things. So if there's anybody that's more likely to have success early in these kind of situations, it's the veteran dudes, it's um, Vince Apollity, and it's Tyler Dones when they come back later on, Paul McIntosh, Hudson by Oric. Those are the players that you feel a lot more comfortable dropping them in the two and three hole and saying, go do your thing. Okay, we'll finish up with Kevin Kinder. Steve, you uh, made a little change at the top of the lineup. Hudson had been leading off when he was available. You put Victor back there. Just the idea of getting a little more speed and taking advantage of Hudson's uh, you know, back control, plate discipline, to kind of get things started at the top of the order. Yes, it it was a, it was Austin Davis who led off, but you're exactly right. We we made that change, and Hudson wasn't available, and so we didn't have the choice. We went with kind of a more traditional leadoff hitter in Austin Davis for the last four games now. Um, really proud of Austin Davis. He made an adjustment. He's always hit a little bit later in the order or in the middle of the order, and we've used him more to drive runs in and. He had super quality at bats today. He saw more pitches than he ever sees. And we were joking at the end of the game with him, he got hit by a pitch. And oftentimes he'll move his feet in certain situations because he views himself as a hitter and a slugger, which he certainly can do, but he's also one of the faster players in the country. And so we need him on first base. So it's just a, a guy that's evolving and understanding who he is as a player, he's not going to be a home run hitter. He might hit some home runs, but that's just never who he is. And Hudson is absolutely a back control guy and on base percentage guy. But if you're able to get AD on base, and that's what we've been working so hard on, all of a sudden that turns into a couple stolen bases and an RBI versus having to slug in Hudson Byrick, who won't steal a base. And so I think I like that dynamic. A little bit better. I stuck with it. That's been a big discussion of um, how we should use those guys effectively. Hudson's a unique guy. He's big and strong, can hit home runs, great on base percentage, and he always wants me to give him the hit and run. Like he just wants to control the barrel. So those guys, those guys are learning from each other. Hudson probably needs to be a little bit more like AD, Austin Davis, and Austin Davis really needs to be like Hudson Byrick. And so if they can mesh a little bit together, we're going to have something special in both of them. Um, they're both learning, you know, their roles and how they can help the team the most. All right, coach. Thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. All right, guys. See ya.